It's my pleasure to introduce to you our keynote speaker for this morning's breakfast, Mr. Donald Martin from Elk Grove, California. Don grew up hunting and fishing in California's Central Valley. As a youth, he became an accomplished bass fisherman, having competed in over 40 bass tournaments by the time he was 18. Don is a graduate of Humboldt State University where he majored in theater arts, film production, and studied wildlife and fisheries management. After graduation, Don apprenticed as a hunting and fishing guide in Alaska and has been a registered guide there for over 20 years. Also, for over a decade, he guided in Sonora, Mexico for mule deer and coos deer. Don is currently the director of hunting operations for Ultima Thule Outfitters and is a licensed guide in California for Thule elk, wild hogs, and turkeys. In the off season, Don is a digital film producer and a bass fishing guide. He resides in Elk Grove with his wife, Katie. Having guided over 275 successful hunts for 12 different species of North American big game, Don recognizes the need for sound wildlife management, habitat conservation, and dedication to putting and keeping wild sheep on the mountain. Don is a Summit Life member of WSF, a Chadwick Ram Society member, and a, mem a life member of the California WSF, Eastern WSF, Idaho, SCBS, Washington WSF, and the Alaska Professional Hunters Association. He also maintains memberships, an additional conservation organization, and is currently serving as the president of the California WSF chapter. Don has been the master of ceremonies for California WSF since 2017, and for Washington in 2019, and for APHA. He was awarded the California Above and Beyond Award in 2015, and received the Guide Industry's highest honor in 2018, the Wild Sheep Foundation's GCF Dalziel Outstanding Guide Award. Hey, Nolan. Yeah. Hey, good morning, Life members. I know you got a lot of questions. We're going to get to it. Holy mackerel, Andy. Good to see all of you this morning in your varying stages of sobriety. Woo, I went to bed early. You know how early I had to get up to be drunk for this talk? Woo! All right. Got a little bit of housekeeping. So right before my talk, Grace Thornton came up and he spoke to me. He pulled me in my elbow. He said, Don, Don, I want you to tell the member something for me. I said, great, dude, it's me. Come on. Whatever. This is very important, Don. I want you to tell the member something for me. Great. Go right ahead. He said, I want you to tell them this. The words and opinions of Donald C. Martin do not necessarily represent the opinions of the Wild Sheep Foundation, its chapters, its affiliates, its members, or the Peppermill Hotel, Casino, and Resort. Woo! Now I've got that out of the way, man. It's Lord of the Flies. We can do whatever we want. Yeah! I don't have any sponsors. So... <laughs> Good to be here. Good to see all of you. I want to thank a few people before I get into... Uh, my talk, which is 90% entertainment, as you can tell already. Uh, I want to thank the people that gave me a chance, the reason I'm on this stage right now, because somebody took a chance on me. Not just a guide outfitter in Alaska, but uh, one of my best friends, Walter Chuck, former president of Oregon Finance. He hung his name out there and said, hey, you, you really ought to look at this kid. He's, he's got potential. And people took a chance on me, and I appreciate that. And that's, that's what this organization is all about. It's about risk. We're a high-risk organization. Uh, so I want to thank Nick Pierscala, uh, Glenn Allsworth Sr., Tony Lee, and, of course, Paul and Donna Claus, giving me the best job I've ever had in my life. And uh, I would also like to thank Paul and Susan Ellis from Anchorage, Alaska. They are my surrogate parents. Uh, I've worked with uh, Paul uh, apprenticed under him out on the Mulchatna River 25 years ago, and uh, I wouldn't be able to do my job without them. Paul and Susan are, are family, and I thank them for their contribution. So, what's going on with Kung Fu at this time of the morning? Well, for those of you that don't know me, a lot of my friends call me Hollywood. And when they started calling me that in, in Alaska, back when I was a Chuchaco, when I was a Greenhorn, they didn't mean it in a nice way. So, 
But it's true, I'm an actor. I was a card-carrying member. Still am a card-carrying member of the Screen Actors Guild and the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. That was my screen test for The Matrix. And if you haven't been keeping up on current events, I was not in The Matrix. I wasn't even in the sequel. I was not in the sequel to the sequel. <laughs> but I had this other life. I had this other life with you wonderful people. This other life in Alaska, the siren song of the mountain would call me and I'd be like, you know, I'm ready to get out of this 90210 shithole. So I'd go to Alaska and work for four, five, six months a year. My agent thought I was all messed up on smack, said the kid's on drugs. He doesn't return phone calls. He doesn't return emails. He just drops off the face of the earth for four months at a time. Uh, yeah, I'm addicted. I'm addicted to the mountain. I'm addicted to the frontier, to the wilderness, to the unknown, to the adventure, to all of the intense experiences that we share together out there. And I'm thankful for you. Everything I have is because of the people in this room. I get, I get a little emotional when I talk about that. So as I started to experience a little bit of success as a guide, I suddenly... Uh, got an opportunity to do a hunting show. And then I got an opportunity to do another hunting show. And then I produced a underground hunting video. It was not for public consumption, it was a little intense. But it was very popular. And then I partnered with an outfit in South Africa and I produced a real hunting video. I sold a lot of VHS tapes. And for the young people in the room, you know, VHS tape is, well, you can Google it. So. And that produced another hunting video, and it was on another hunting show, and another hunting show, and then I produced a DVD called Cub Driver Alaska. It was all about uh, Super Cubs. It was very popular. But if you weren't a pilot, it was a little hard to watch. So I produced another DVD called Cub Driver No Second Chances. It was wildly popular in the light sport aircraft community. Sold thousands of copies all over the world. Very, very popular. Then I had a year where I did six different hunting shows in one year, and that pretty much burned me on ever doing hunting shows again. It really sucked the fun out of it for me. And, uh, and I came to the realization that I had appeared more on television and on, in film and on DVD as Donald C. Martin than I ever had in any role that I had ever been cast. And so for the younger people in the room, this, this is the life lesson from all of that. You will be and experience more success and satisfaction in your life by being and doing what you love instead of pretending to be something that you are not. Now, I could quit right there and be a huge success, but I'm a sheep hunter, and we don't know how to quit, right? All right. A lot of people are asking me about the hair. Are you going through a midlife crisis? And I said, no. My family dies young. Shit, I had my midlife crisis 20 years ago. <laughs> so I'm thinking about getting back into acting, looking at my schedule. I got some free time. So I'm looking at an opportunity to do some summer stock. So I go in to audition for the role of one of the apostles in Jesus Christ Superstar. This is a true story. So I walk into the audition, and the gal, she sees me. She's mad as soon as she sees me. She comes stomping up in her wool socks and Birkenstocks. She said, didn't you get the email? I said, no, evidently not. She, she said, said this, this is a, a very, very progressive, progressive production company, company and we, we are, are going to go with an all-lesbian cast. I said, that's perfect. I've been a lesbian my whole life. God, I love women. Hell, I married one. In my neck of the woods, that makes me the social justice warrior. I mean to tell you. Hey, she was mad. They're not all that way. I promise you. I went to a sheep meeting one time, went to a wild sheep meeting in a city I had never been to. And this is where your phone will get you into trouble. 
I get to the hotel, I pull out my phone, and I Google restaurants near me, okay? Hamburger joint. Good food, good service, cold beer. Two blocks away. Boom, sold, I'm there. Staring at my phone, scrolling through Instagram, looking at Kuyu Nation and all these great big giant bucks that Craig Van Arsdale keeps killing. Congratulations, Craig. What a year. Woo! And I, I, go, I go in the place. I'm not really paying attention. I'm glued to my screen. I go right in the place, go straight to the bar. It's me. And order Bud Light. I am sponsored by Anheuser-Busch. I have to say that. The gal hands me this like five pound old school schooner, frozen, frothy, beautiful, refreshing Bud Light. I take a sip and then I, I, look, I look around to take in my environs and I realize the decor in this place is absolutely fabulous. Oh. And then I start looking at the patrons and they're looking at me. They're looking at all of this. Hey. This book, you can read by its cover. Hey, there's some plot twists. You pretty much know how it's going to end. You know what you're dealing with, okay? So I wave the bartender over, and she has my full attention. This is for the first time. I'm looking right at her. She's a beautiful young African-American gal. She's a gorgeous little girl, barely old enough to serve alcohol. She comes over, she's got all these piercings, 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 gauges, piercings. Ladies, <laughs> Piercings are like cats, okay? One or two is okay, 15 is a red flag. I'm talking warning, Will Robinson, danger, danger, okay? Ladies, you are beautiful, stop stabbing yourself in the face. God, holy mackerel, Andy. So, I wave her over and I say, is there something I need to know about this place? And she laughs with the most beautiful, organic, genuine belly laugh, like from the diaphragm. She must have been an opera singer. And she leans into me like an old tiny barkeep. I don't know why she's Irish. She just leans into me like an old barkeep, and she says, um, this is an LGBTQC friendly establishment. And I think to myself, uh, what about H? And she says, excuse me? I said, hetero, heterosexual. Yelled it at the, she made an announcement to the whole establishment. She laughed her ass off. And she walks away and she quips over her shoulder as she leaves. Sugar, you're fine. And I'm like, I'm old enough to be your father. Why would you say something like that? And she was channeling her 85-year-old grandmother at the time. So I'm at a trade show. Not this show, another show. Right? Guy walks into the booth. Hey, Jim Shockey puts his hand out. I'm like, ha ha, never heard that one before. Good one. Right? Hat, hair. I'm one of two guys, right? I'm either Jim Shockey or I'm Colorado Buck. Boom. That's right. No mustache. That makes me Jim Shockey. <laughs> and I, we're laughing and it's funny. And then this gentleman proceeds down a line of very, very serious questioning about international capra. And it dawns on me, he really thinks I'm Jim Shockey. The man's a foot taller than me. I mean, with the hat, come on, and he wears high heels. It, with the hat, taking a lot of pictures with Jim. And I had to stop him, I panicked. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm, 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 I'm not Jim Shockey, I'm, I'm Donald C. Martin. The man visibly deflated before my very eyes. So suddenly now I'm the bad guy because he had just met Jim Shockey and I took it away from him. I'm going to lie next time. Next time he walks in the booth, somebody says, hey, Jim Shockey, I'm just like, no guff. And I'm walking away. Guys will go home and say, hey, I met Jim Shockey at the show. He's awesome. Super nice guy. Yeah, he's not as tall as I thought he would be. And he's doing something with his hair. No, I was <laughs> sitting on the side of a mountain with a guy one time about, this is about 17 years ago. We're glassing for moose, and it's one of those ideal mornings. It's quiet. It's beautiful. It's, it's one of those flat light situations, no harsh shadows. You could pick an antler tying out a spruce stand two miles away. It's just so serene and sublime. I can feel my hunter's eyes burning into me, staring me down. What's up? It's like, hey, 
You've got really great hair. Where's this going? I hope this guy's not a fast runner. Uh, he says, have you ever thought about growing your hair out and donating it? And I said, that's a thing? This is 17 years ago. He's like, yeah, yeah, you grow your hair out, donate it. You know, there's a lot of young people out there going through tough times with cancer, leukemia. You know, you could donate your hair, make a wig, and make some young person, you know, feel better about themselves and maybe get them over the hump. I said, let me get this straight. I can get some free karma points, and all I got to be is too lazy to go to the barber and take crap off my friends who are going to give me crap anyways. That sounds like a pretty good deal. So that's, that's what's, what's going, going on. I've donated, donated it before, and I'm donating it again. I'm trying to raise money. I'm working with uh, Sheep Show All-Stars to uh, raise There they are over there, trying to raise money. So we're going we're gonna to try to get a twofer out of it. But, uh, yeah, I lost my dad to cancer. Lost him young. He, uh, we made a lot of plans. None of that ever happened. I watched the strongest man in my life shrivel down to nothing and blow away in the wind. I'm not here to make you cry. We all have a tragedy. Everybody has a story that can make you cry. I'm not here for that. I'm here to entertain you. But as I, as I sum up, what I'd like to say is, you know, there's a lot of people out there dealing with these things, cancer, with challenges, with whatever they may be. But they're going to look to you, okay? And whether you know it or not, whether you regard yourself as such or not, you're the strong ones. You're capable of more than you know. I know. I've demanded it of you. I've lied to you. I've deceived you. I've tricked you. I give you rah-rah speeches. I tell jokes. But you people have a high tolerance for pain, for suffering, for discomfort. And you'll find that in times of need and desperation, you people are going to be the ones that others reach out to, to lean on. You, you can, can be, be that, that rock, and I know you can. So, so I'm going to challenge you again. I've challenged you once before from this stage. I challenge you to introduce new people to this family, because that's what we are. We're a family. We don't all get along, but we're a family. And I appreciate everything you've done for me and everything you've done for Wild Sheep. But I'll challenge you, because you can do more. I know you can. Get involved. You're here. You're the vanguard. You're the ones that everyone looks to. Go to your state dinner. Go to your neighboring state's dinner. Be that person. Aspire to be the person that I always aspired to be, which was my father. He was a man who didn't have any enemies. I've aspired to be that man. I failed. Hell, there's people in this room who hate my guts. Ladies and gentlemen, you have given me so much. And I know I have asked so much of you, but I ask you to just continue carrying the torch forward, setting the example for our young people to carry it further into the future when we're not here. It's the only way that we can save this family, this culture, this belief system, this thing that we love so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you have done so much and you continue to be everything that I have aspired to be my whole life. It's been my greatest honor to talk to you today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wild Sheep Foundation.